You can't be living in the richest country in the world and be poor for 30 years mm. and still believe your poverty is the right thing. Like, we show you the gold. Sure. We show you the silver. Sure. We show you the platinum. Sure. We show you the, the agriculture. We show you, we show you, we show you, we show you. And then the moment you see them, you still turn around and say, ah, man, 350 right. Worry. I, 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 like, I like people that stand up and want to speak for young people, but I worry about our young people in a sense that, um, first of all, our young people, there's a majority of them who are just unemployed. There is a majority of them who could be employed. They've got degrees, but they, you, do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of despondency and there's a lot of, it's not my problem as young people. So there's an awakening that needs to happen that it is your problem. And you do need to sort of speak about these problems because they affect your everyday lives. Um, is my worry valid? Is this a worry that is merited? Look, I think what you're saying is true. And, and what I've come to learn, and it's a truth that many people are not ready and willing to accept. Mm. Political parties have numbed the pain sure. of South Africa. Sure. I'll give you an example. You're a young person. You're serious about the land. Mm. You're serious about changing the country. Sure. Right? You join the EFF. When you join the EFF, the EFF says to you, uh, fighter, it's good that you're serious about this thing, but uh, you can't close down the mine. These guys have donated funds to us. Mm. Let's not close down the mine. Let's rather negotiate with them. And what happens is your, your vigor, your ambition, your fighting in you is toned down because somebody's received funds and now they've come back to you and they've given you a different narrative. Mm. And you as a young person begin to say, yeah, you know what? This is not how things work. Things take time. And you now ask yourself, to say, okay, who told you things take time? You say, no, no, no. I've joined the ANC. The ANC has told us that we're still working on a draft proposition. We have to go to conference. We have to vote. These things take time. These political parties that have been set up, they've been set up to fool our people. Got it. To calm the anger, to say, oh, you're a fighter. Come and join us. But in your fighting, we'll march. We, we won't fight the banks. We'd, we'd rather, you know, fight maybe one or two marches here. Let's not be too disruptive, you know. And it's like these political parties have collected all these people. You're an intellectual. Come, come be in the DA. Come draft papers. Come listen to somebody speak, you know. Oh, you, you, you're a fighter. You're violent. Come join the EFF. Come in, come in. Oh, you, 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 you like rhetoric. Come to the ANC. Let's talk about none of the political parties are acting. And what we're saying is that we're, we're not going to let people join us and we're not going to sit down and discuss rhetoric and all these things. No, Get it. We're not going to do that. So what, what, what are you guys going to do? We're going to bring the world to the negotiating table. How? We're saying, number one, by doing the things that I've spoken about. Uh -huh. We're going to bring them and say, number one, our currency is wrong. We're not one rand equals 20 dollars. I mean, one dollar equals 20, 20 rands. No, our currency is wrong. Firstly, we must fix the currency situation. Banks have manipulated our currency. Got it. Our currency has been manipulated for many years. We need our currency fixed. That's our first thing. The second thing, many of these politicians in this country have negotiated loans that we continue to pay every single year based on their negotiations. We're going to call back those loans and say, hold on, we're, we're going to stop paying these loans. Mm. And when people speak about this, you know, people get so afraid because I think a lot of the times... People have been used to politicians that were not smart, you know. People have been used to politicians that, that they could control, you know. I come from a cryptocurrency and blockchain situation. Got it. Right? We made Bitcoin what it is. Uh -huh. we, we did that. I went to New York. I met the creators. I've sat down with them. We understand these things, you know. We, we don't speak. I, I'm not one that wants to speak so that people can think, hey, this and that and the other. And, and, I, and a lot of people think, oh, okay. These ones just, you know, I've heard the narratives of, oh, they've got the good English. You know, what are they going to do? Behind that good English is yes. some earth-shattering information got that it. will cause the world to come to a standstill. So what we're going to do is we're going to position Africa to where it should be, which is the best country in the world. Not because we're not already, mm. because it is the truth. Sure. And for us to deal with those things, they're fundamentals we must fix. The banking system needs to be fixed. Got it. The currency situation uh -huh. needs to be fixed. We need to re-educate our people. Our people have been very much educated to be administrators. If you look at the education system, Tell me it more. doesn't teach you anything that you can do with the stuff you own. 
Sure. It teaches you how to administrate, how to use things that have been created and you found them there. Mm. We want to teach our people how to use the stuff that they own. So how would, what does that look like? You know, um, majority of the young people in this country are in an education sort of system, whether high school, university, postgrad, whatever. What, what do your education policies look like if they're different to... To what exists. Practical what exists. universities. Tell me more. I'll give you an example. If you look at agriculture, uh, people are going to colleges and they're learning about agriculture. And when, after they learn about agriculture, they write exams and that's it. And then that's yeah. it. Practical universities. If I'm talking about agriculture, the government will have land in Limpopo okay. that they own. Sure. That land will build the university there. This is not a university where you're going to do theory. No. Mm. When you come to that university, we give you 200 hectares of land. And we say, you're studying pumpkins. Sure. That's what you're studying. Mm. We've got a professor who's teaching. We're not saying theorize the pumpkin. No. Plant the pumpkin. Uh, Your exam is on the pumpkin. Oh. You passing is on the pumpkin. Oh, Mr. Lecturer. If this pumpkin doesn't grow, you're not going to get a salary because you're failing as a lecturer. Oh, no, but I've been taught theorizing. That's not what we, we're paying you to do. Sure. We're not basing it on theories. The pumpkin must grow. Because that's what we're doing here. If we're funding this university, we're funding the pumpkin to grow. Mm. That's what. When we say that this student has graduated, the pumpkin has grown. Once the student graduates, there must be land that that person can be given to now go and farm those pumpkins. Seems like a, the land issue is quite, a, is quite a, a funny issue because I think the EFF had something similar a couple of weeks ago of um, the government owning land and people then being able to use that land. Is it a similar module, model? Is it a different model? Look, I think, I think the, the danger with the EFF is that they, they started well, mm. but along the way, um, I believe that they, they, they were captured with a sort of apathy of not bringing about change. Okay. Right? You go into the EFF and you ask fundamental questions to say, you guys have had a lot of ample time. What have you changed in the things you said you want to change? There's nothing. There's nothing really that they've changed. They've, they've gathered every angry person in this country and, and they've told them, Calm down. They've, they've appeased the anger. Uh, There's nothing that they've changed. The, the anger that they speak about will change the land. We'll do this. We'll do that. Nothing has changed. One would argue, devil's advocate here, that these things take time. Processes. No. Um, it's, you, they, you know, you can't destabilize a country. Dubai used their oil to build. Uh. It, didn't, it didn't take time. It didn't take time. I visited Dubai, and I visited Dubai, I think, about three times now. Got it. The first time around I went, I went on my own to do a research study. Sure. The second time I was invited, mm -hmm. they paid for me to go. It was a company in Dubai. They booked me first class. Um, I, I think it was first class of business. But basically, they spent about 700,000 rand sure. on getting me to go to Dubai on Got this it. trip. And I did a vlog about it when I was there. They showed me Bugattis. They took me to a place and showed me Bugattis. They said, look, move to Dubai. Come and become this blockchain mega super person in mm. Dubai. And? And I saw all of it and I said, hmm, these guys are smart. They bring the best in the world. They spend to bring the best in the world to come so they can build with them. I went to Dubai. I came back and I said, you know what? I'm not going to do it. There were other people who were also in the industry in this country that are now living in Dubai. Mm. People like Gray Jabesi. Right. He's also experienced this, but he's in Dubai. He decided sure. to go. And I said that the model behind Dubai is that they build for the best. Mm. That's what they do. They essentially bribe the best in the world to, to come, come and, and those people build for them. Sure. Right. I've had an interesting encounter with the natives of Dubai. The people that were in Dubai, live in Dubai, are from Dubai. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to say something controversial, and I mean, yeah, Twitter, go ahead. Say it. They're very dumb. Very dumb. But Extremely he... dumb. To the point where when you speak to them, <laughs> you even walk away asking yourself, what, what is going on here? Right. Some of the natives don't even know how to speak English. Okay. Some of the natives to them, it's a woman 
must sit at home, cook. Okay. That's it. A woman must not speak back, right? They, their knowledge on the, how the world works is so limited to the sure. point where you'll be like, this is somebody from Dubai. This is somebody who's, who's like, what do you mean this guy's telling me that women must not work? Women must wear robes. Women must. You sit there and you're like, here? Yeah? This is a, a person who, who understands something. Then you ask yourself, who built Dubai? If these guys are thinking like this. <coughs> Mm. And you realize that it's not there. So, so the I, I just need to qualify the dumb statement because, like, I get touched when people get called dumb. They are dumb because they're not liberal in thought, or they or they, inclusive, they, traditional. They, and, 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 and let me explain my, my 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 definition of dumb because I'm trying to prove a point here. They are dumb in that they believe certain things mm. that the world has proved to not be to true. not be true. Got it. Like a woman must not ever work. Get it. The world has showed us that women are able to contribute at the highest avalanches of life. Sure. You know, and, and these are people that believe that. And no matter what science can show them or explain to them, they'd still believe that. Right. Do you and, think. And, and hold on. I, yeah, yeah. I, I want to just bring this back to context. Yeah, yeah. Me calling them dumb is me trying to show South Africans that it's not about education. Yes. Because with you, I. I I, I don't want to get into people watching the interview and thinking, oh, he called people in Dubai, damn, how dare he, you're missing the point. Get it. The point is, people believe South Africans are dumb. Mm. 30% mathematics. Oh, we don't have smart people in this country. No wonder we have load shedding. Yeah, uh -huh. No wonder things are not working. People in this country are stupid. Yeah, they're not smart. Hello, there are people in Dubai that are worse, but they are not the ones building Dubai. Dubai goes out to the world and says, are you the best at what you do? Come. Come. Let me tell you a little bit about the trip that I went to in Dubai right? sure. from this blockchain company. Before I took that trip, they, they reached out and said, we want you to come to Dubai and we want you to come and experience what we're going to show you, right? And I said to them, mm, okay, I'll come. Let's see, right? And they spoke to some people in Nigeria as well. And they basically took people in Nigeria, Ghana, and South Africa, Right. The guys in Nigeria that they spoke to, they said to some of them, um, we want to book you. The guy said, oh, we're excited. They said, right, how are we booking you? And they said, look, um, we'll book you um, economy class flights mm. and you'll come through. And when they spoke to me, I said to them, I don't fly economy, right? And they said, what type of African doesn't fly economy? I said, well, I don't. I don't. I've never, since my days in university, I've never flown economy. Uh -huh. And they said to me, no, you will fly economy. And I said, tell the owners of the company that if they're telling me to fly economy, I'm not coming. Got it. The moment they spoke to the owners, the owners called me and said, we're so sorry for how these agents in Africa have been treating you. We do not treat people like this. We reprimanded them and we told them everything you need should be done for you. Mm. When I landed, there were vehicles that took me to where I need to go. I had insistence. I had the best hotel rooms. I had everything of the best, mm. right? By the way, my age, I'm a kid in Africa. Sure. Right. But in Dubai? But in Dubai, they saw the knowledge that I had. Sure. Right. And they, they, they saw what I've been able to build. That, okay, this kid's in Africa. He understands blockchain technology. He's contributing on papers. He's going out in the world and talking about it. He's written a book about this. And mm, they're like, mm, shucks, mm, 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 mm. we need to get him in, you know? And when I was in Dubai, what was very interesting for me was realizing that in Dubai, their language is always move to Dubai and build in Dubai. Sure. Move your company to Dubai and, and build, build here. Yeah. yeah. Basically, what they do is they find the best in the world to come and build. Right? We already have the minerals. Yes. The land. Sure. We have all these things. We can build the best things by bringing in the best people in the world. If we were saying that people in South Africa can't build, we can't do this, we can build the best. Mm. I'll give you an example. There, there's somebody who's part of Arise South Africa and he's one of our leaders. I won't mention his name. Right? Sure. He brought the best architects in the world to come and build a building here in Johannesburg. And? They're ready. They're willing, right? All they're waiting for is the environment to allow them to do that. That's all they're waiting for. It's, it's for them to just say... Look, we spoke to the municipality. We want to build 24-7. We spoke to the municipality. They told us that whenever you build something in South Africa, you need to stop building at 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Our model is built on building 
it's a municipality issue. Sure. You need someone in the municipality to be like, listen, these are the be- this is the best construction company in the world. Give them the permit to build 24-7. The municipality is saying, ay, man. But I'm a bylaw. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. How about you, man? So is it a matter of our policies and our bylaws are sort of holding the, the, the certain things got behind? that are running these systems yes. are not the right people. These are pensioners that don't understand how things function. That is, one would argue that is ageist. You can't, you can't call people Look, pensioners. Look, I, I don't think it's ageist. I think it's realizing that the apartheid government damaged the way of thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's realizing that if we're going to fix it for them as well, we need to 